All right. So, guys, you may have a bunch of questions on this. That's why I wanted to stop it, and I didn't want to break it up. I wanted you to have the full, like, everything together. So, remember, when we write this function, what kind of function is this? Yeah. yeah. So, remember, our regular function is y equals... a times, I'm going to write it like this now, x minus h squared minus k, and that's our vertex. Our h and our k are our vertex. So the one thing that you haven't done is put your vertex into the equation. We've taken it out. So remember, we were changing x and keeping y. Now we're going to do the opposite. If we look at this quadratic, and this is our vertex, It's at negative one, four. So when we write our equation, and we're gonna keep filling in this equation, we change X, so instead of a negative one, it's gonna be positive one. Is everybody okay with that? Change X, it's a quadratic, so you gotta have your square up here. Keep Y, so the positive four. All right, so when we wrote our equations before, we also needed another point. I don't like to use the boundary points. I like to find another one. So can anybody see a really good point that's not a boundary point? And I call them perfect points because they go through the lattice the correct way. Anybody see one? And I see a really easy one. Zero, three. You can do zero, zero, or you can do three, zero. It's up to you. So I got this one. If you picked zero, three, that would be fine. If you picked this one, I think it's negative two, three, all of them will come out the same. So don't stress about which point you pick. I just like zero, three or three, zero because it gives us nice numbers to work with down here. Okay, this becomes your X and Y. So what is your Y coordinate? Three. What's your X coordinate? Zero. Do not change the sign of that one. The only one you change is the vertex point. Rewrite your equation. Remember, we've already done this. We're solving for A. We've already done this, but we had zero, zero for our vertex. So now we're changing our vertex. That's it. We've already done this. Zero plus one is one. Squared is one. Times A is one A. Finish it out plus four. Solve it. We're gonna subtract four. We get negative one equals one A, which is A equals negative one. What this does is it gives us our equation. Our equation would be Y equals negative one, and then you're gonna finish it out with all this. All I did was plug in A. Okay, again, all I did was plug in A. X plus one squared plus four. This is your equation. So if I continue to graph this further on, and I don't want you to write this, I'm just showing you. If I continue to do that, that equation right there graphs this graph, all right? So now what we have to do is figure out how to bound it. So we need to write this other part up here. This other part is going to look like one of these. Why is it going to look like that? Because we're graphing it in between. Where would our boundary lines be? Like, where would I, I highlight at? Where does this graph stop on the left and the right? Negative four and one. Okay, so negative four and one. So here's what you write. This is your equation, negative one x plus one squared plus four. You said your boundaries are negative four, we graphed in between, and one. Does everybody understand that? Again, I'm gonna put it back. We're trying to write something like this. So I have my two numbers, I have my x in between. Now I have to figure out my inequality symbols. 
they are always less than. The question is, are they equal to or not? So you tell me, are they equal to or no? Yes. Why are they equal to? Circles. Perfect. What if this one was open? What if just this one was open? The you one would have an under the one. The one would just be less than. Perfect. If this one were open, this side would be just less than. But again, it's always written this way. Your two boundary points with your X in the middle, both less than. Both less than. Okay. So we're going to do it again. All right. What kind of function is this? Absolute value. Where is your vertex? One negative three. three. Okay, one negative three. So we have y equals a absolute value of x minus h minus k. The same exact thing that we just did, it's just absolute value instead of the squared quadratic. I need another coordinate. Do you guys see another coordinate anywhere? Negative two, zero. Mm -hmm. You really can't mess up with this one because it goes through pretty much every point perfectly. Okay, so this becomes your x and your y. So what's your y coordinate? Two, zero. Mm -hmm. We're looking for a, so we're gonna leave it alone. What's your x coordinate? It stays exactly the same. Negative two. Your vertex x changes. It changes. So it's a positive one here. In your equation, it's a minus one. And then close your absolute value. And then keep your last one. So we're going to keep negative three. Clean it up. Solve for A. Write your equation. Negative two minus one. Negative three. What's the absolute value of negative three? Three. Three. Uh -huh. And we're going to multiply it by A. Remember, absolute value is always positive. So if I had a positive three in there, the absolute value of positive three is still positive three. Okay. We're going to solve it by adding three. And then we're going to divide by three and we get a equals one. Try to get that all up here as well. So your equation is y equals one times the absolute value of x, keep the ending, minus one, minus three. Sorry, that three looks like crap. I'm gonna transfer that back up to the top where it says f of x, one, Absolute value, x minus one, minus three. You don't have to put the one in front if you don't want to, but I want you to know where it came from. How many boundary points do you have on this one? One. one. Just one. How do you know you only have one? Because the other is infinite. Yes, because the other side you have an arrow. It's that simple. Don't make it too complicated. So we only have this one boundary point. Which side of the graph did we graph on, the left or the right? Left. Okay, so what does that mean, the inequality I'm gonna use? It's less than X. Uh-huh. So X is less than, what number was our boundary point at? Two. Two. So if it's in between, put it in between. If not, you just tell me, is it left or right? So left is less than. If it had been on the right side, we'd write greater than. Your boundary is two. The last question is, is it equal to or not? Equal to. Why is it equal to? Because closed. the boundary solid. It is closed. All right, so that finishes our notes. If you have more questions or you want to see, especially another one of these, I will stay on here and you can ask, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.